With just simply using a language model or copilot, you cannot execute tasks. You can just simply retrieve some knowledge and get the answer. But how about if you want to automatically execute some tasks, let's say automated advanced data analytics on your even large data without you coding, even up to all the way predicting a stock market for any given company without you training a machine learning model and making it all automated. This is the time we're going to talk about a recently released open source library by Microsoft called Task Weaver, which will let us to have a code based agent framework that we can execute tasks automatically, not just retrieving knowledge and have our chatbot leverage all these plugs and capabilities and automatically execute those codes and do the analytics for us. And we just be there, provide the feedback and enjoy the results. Then let's go. Before we start, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell icon so you will get notified for the next video. Thank you. All right, welcome everyone to Task Weaver, which is another open source library released by Microsoft. And Task Weaver is a code first agent framework. So, what does that mean? So, it's not just like an LLM that you ask a question and generate code for you. No. You actually ask your query, it will generate the code and execute it for you. So, it's a code first agent that can execute data analytics tasks for you without you coding. You just ask your query and task. That's it. And the good thing about Task Weaver is it is stateful. That means when you ask a question and you can ask a follow up question, so it has sort of a memory and understand the flow of the analytics you are asking. So it generate the code, execute the code. You can have your plugin and add it there. For example, Task Weaver has some sample plugins. One of those is web search. That means when there is a question that needs internet knowledge, Task Weaver knows that it should go and grab the web search plugin, execute it, and get the internet knowledge and, and to sort of complement the task you're asking. So it is plugin oriented, it is code and code execution oriented as well, and we're gonna run some demos quickly. But before doing so, let's take a closer look on how is the process when you ask a query from um, Task Weaver. So you are here, you ask your question, task, whatever you want to do. Let's say you say that I want to predict the stock market price for that specific company uh, through a machine learning model. So you don't want to also train a machine learning model, right? So this is but the query that you have. So it will go to an LLM that can be GPT, OpenAI models or any other LLM. We're going to talk about that. Then there's a planner that use LLM to, to generate some sub tasks need to be done for answer your question or executing your task. Then these tasks, which are defined by a planner, will go to a code generator that uses plugins and examples as well, again, powered by language model to generate the codes and execute them in Python on your server. If there are errors, bugs and stuff, there's a self friction So it tries to fix by itself. And we talked about that. It's in a stateful conversation and manner. So that's why there's a memory here too that uses the RAM. Okay. So let's see how we can install and launch the demo. I will show you quickly. So what I'm going to do, I will try to install uh, task fever I have done that but I just want to show you how I did and I will add the link of all the materials code and reference github that I'm using to to provide to this tutorial to the discord channel link on the reference section so if you click on discord channel link in the video description below you will go to the discord channel and click on the reference sub channel inside that channel you will see the link of these materials that I'm talking about so simply what you need to do make sure you have git installed and you need to clone this repository github.com, Microsoft, TaskSiever.git. So I have done that already, so I'm not going to run it again. And after that, you just need to go to the path that you just cloned this GitHub, Git repo, which is task viewer. So you have to also type the same thing. Oh, let me see if I have a typo here. There, yes, sorry, I know what happened. So I cloned that in my download repo let me there you go and then there it is so i was in the download folder when i cloned that github that's why i couldn't find this folder so wherever you run the previous first code you just then type cd task weaver and you're in the task weaver folder that you have cloned the repository and to show you how it's going to look like here it is i am in my download folder task weaver which i just 
did the city there and here all the repos that I just cloned for task fever if you go to the projects folder here you'll see that there's a task weaver config file json file this is the place you need to add your open ai or large language model credential so let me show you how it looked like i added mine this is how mine look like and by the way i'm gonna revoke this api key before publishing this video so that's fine and i'm using open ai again you can use also different type of models to show you what models you can use Here's this task weaver documents, and when I open LLMs, OpenAI is just one of them. You can use Azure OpenAI, Light LM, Llama, Gemini, Q, and so on and so forth. Okay, so I'm using also GPT 4, but you can change it as needed. Now, getting back to my terminal, so what's next? You need to also install some packages, but don't worry, it's already in a requirement file, so I'm going to show you how you can do so. When you're in the task weaver folder, just say pip install our requirements.txt. It will install all the packages that you need to sort of running task weaver. Again, I have executed this code too, so I'm not going to run it again. After doing so, I'm making sure that you have added your opening and credentials. What you need to do is just simply running task weaver. But before running task weaver, there's just one slight package you need to install and make sure you have installed that, which is chainlet. So Chainit is very similar to Streamlit. You can generate UI for your chatbots to have it as like a web application, production-ready web application, actually. So why do we need Chainlit? Because we want to run Task Weaver through a UI. You can use Task Weaver in the terminal too, ask the question in the terminal, and then Task Weaver execute the tasks and codes for you. But they have recently added the UI version, and I found it very more intuitive to, to showcase Task Weaver through UI. So less coding, less terminal, and more beautiful stuff on the UI. So that's why you need to also install Chainlet. Again, I have done so. And after um, installing this, you have to go to the CD. Okay, let me copy that, I have it here. You have to go to the playground folder and then UI, which is playground-UI. Here I am, and I just simply say channel it run app.py. But I'm going to run this command in another tab because I installed all those packages and stuff in a virtual environment. So that's why if I execute that code there, it won't run. So I want to run it here because again, I, I saved the time before recording this video, I installed everything. So I'm going to run and see task weaver running so after a couple of seconds you should see the task weaver will be launched in your browser on your local server there you go it just launched my browser and welcome to task weaver that's the place you can start asking your question execute the task and even codes without you coding them so what i'm going to do as you can see there's an attach file icon that means i can upload my own sort of files and do whatever i want to do for example i have a pdf file in my download there you go that's a sample pdf file that i just downloaded from internet and i think it's in for talking about it we're gonna open that shortly but i want to ask what is this pdf about so you, you remember i told you there's a planner that create the sub tasks to sort of initialize what's the action items needed to be done so this is how the planner is working so it is using llm gpt4 here to understand the task need to be done and if i show you my terminal you will see that the same thing is happening on terminal so i could show you task weaver over terminal and see all this stuff but again i prefer to have that through ui which is more nicer and especially from learning perspective but you don't need to use ui you can just go directly from um, the terminal so i want to pause recording to save the time and when all this process is done i'm going to show you the final result all right, let me show you what I achieved so far. As you can see, if I go all the way up, it was able to generate some codes in Python. I didn't do anything. It installed some for me. I didn't do again anything. It grabbed the text, the raw text out of the PDF file and going all the way sort of summarized that for me. The PDF discussed a 16 role of IT stuff, blah, blah, blah. So this is fantastic. Again, running it on my machine, I'm using GPT-4, but you can use even other large language models, okay? So what else? I actually got an idea when I was why I was recording the video right now so this is the the Boston houses prices that come with cycle it's a sample data set that talk about pricing of different houses in Boston based on their age how many bedrooms they have some characteristics of that house so I want to download this 
and I'm gonna upload to task viewer and ask to do some advanced analytics over this without me coding it so let's do that let me just download it okay I just downloaded that out so let's click on new chat I want to upload the data okay data is uploaded and I'm going to ask do some EDA on this data okay so let's see how it's gonna perform I click on send message again the planner has started to think about okay what I gonna do loading the file performing exploratory analysis or EDA that's what I asked perfect and it's gonna plot the distribution plot correlation which is good it's, it's sort of very similar what a data scientist would do to start getting more info about the data right so it's generating the code for me again I gotta pause recording and when this process is done I gonna show you what is the final result to save your time all right the results are here and they are amazing i'm just going to show you what happened so this is the plan decided so it got to know what kind of eda it needs to be done on the data and if i go all the way back it loaded the data for me it captured some information about the data as you can see it's all here let me go all the way to the place that it generated the codes for me so it used the describe function of Panos data frame to go to get the summary of the statuses of this data by itself then it got to know oh I have to do some plotting stuff and this is the code for generating the plot it actually executed that for confusion matrix if I come all the way down some further configuration about the correlation matrix of this data set and then finally it told me that okay here's the result the data set contain blah 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 this is the summary and look at that these beautiful charts got generated with just a sample data came to my mind when I was recording this video right now we did it together so I can ask follow-up question I kind of say hey modify this plot or change this plot or change the y-axis x-axis of this plot so again it is a stateful you can ask follow-up questions to save the time I did another thing also I asked predict a stock price for the next seven days for Nvidia using Y finance that's just only simple question that I had and look at that again the plan was here if I go all the way and I had some errors by the way to fix that and if I go all the way to down you will see that the pretty thick stock price for the next seven days are this and I was like okay that's nice and I want to plot this prediction over historical values to, to have a visual understanding of how these predictions are good so this is the second question a follow-up question that I asked and look at this it went all the way to the planning generating the codes and finally it gave me this beautiful picture that the green one if let me see if i can make it bigger actually uh, i think i have downloaded that already let me go to the downloads there you go okay so the historical close price is the green one and the red one is here actually the predicted one which sort of is not that bad by the way so that's all it was all about how you can automate execution of tasks and do analytics of your data without you coding just using task viewer let me know how you think and what you recommend for adding on the top of this video if you want to get to know more about task viewer there are much more examples much more capabilities but just wanted to create this video to give you the other possibility and what is there so you can leverage it let me know what you think in the comments your questions and suggestions for the next videos as always i respect and welcome them and if you enjoyed this video make sure you like it thank you do not be afraid of your loneliness in your path to redemption dream big my friends believe in yourself and take action till next video take care good care